<laughs> hey, everyone. Um, I'm just at the office here on floor duty. It's pretty slow. Everyone's out enjoying the sun, I think. Um, but I thought I'd just do a quick little market update for July and sort of what the market's doing. I don't know how many of you watch the news and stuff. I uh, I don't I don't follow that stuff that much, to be honest. I do try to follow statistics for local markets and follow some people that have some good insight into economics and stuff. But I don't watch the news very often. I see a little bit of drama on Facebook, but I even there. I don't spend a lot of time scrolling my news feed and seeing stuff like that, but maybe because I don't pay attention to it. So anyways, um, but of course I hear a little bit and the markets are crazy and changing and especially Vancouver, prices are down, it's soft, Toronto, and you know, you hear all sorts of the, the negative news, I guess you could call it sometimes. Um, but I've tried to follow Campbell Rivers market and you know, I have people ask me or tell me we're waiting for the market to crash. And I'm like, got my teeth. I mean, I... I think I bought my first house in 2009. A mechanic that I worked with told me not to buy it, and because his uh, his wife was an accountant, works in finance, watched what happens in the states, and he was right. I got laid off six months later. I lost, you know, bought my house, got laid off six months later, lost my job. Didn't work for quite a long time. But that being said, I still own that house, and the equity and the mortgage paid on I've got from the tenants I have in it and stuff. I mean, completely outweigh. I don't know if they outweigh the stress. But that being said. You know, if the market changes, as long as you don't plan to sell that house for five years, if you're trying to flip, maybe that's a big Im help, a big impact. Um, but if you're going to keep it for five years, you look at the market stats, and most markets recover in five years, especially in a strong one like Campbell River, where the average price is still way below most places in BC, especially the sought-after ones like anywhere on the island, right? Victoria's crazy expensive, and I believe it's softened a little bit. Anyways, to the market stats. So 2018, 2019 comparing just sort of sales for 2018 in July were 52 so we're down 15 percent we're only at 44 sales for July which isn't isn't a ton there's still lots moving um, the interesting part about that is prices are still going up they went up 10 grand last month um, 25 grand the month before but the month before that they fell a little bit I think about 10 grand so you know there's a little blip in there it might just depend on um, what level of stuff was selling sometimes the higher price stuff you see prices come down a little more, so that will affect the average sale price, right? So for people that maybe told me a year ago we're waiting for the market to crash, you know, we went from July last year, average price was 457 and average prices of this July was 509 So that is, if my brain can work, um, 56000 or sorry, 50, $52,000 um, prices came up since last July. And this is just single family on average. So that's 11% increase in value from last year, which is a pretty good return. I mean, you know, the lowest sometimes, it, well, sometimes they go negative, but um, average over five, 10 years is usually five to 10% on most uh, real estate. But these last couple of years, we've been seeing crazy numbers, of course, with everything happening. So 11% is good return. Um, you know, I've seen some stocks I had high risk before that were doing 15. Um, when I was a mechanic and had, had my stocks with them, I put it super high risk because I was younger and I got 15% a year, so a little better, but you also don't have the mortgage being paid down by, you know, 40% of whatever your mortgage payment is usually around, and you don't have the, if it's a rental, you don't have the cash flow, right? So um, those numbers put together multiply quite a bit, which is another topic on real estate investing. Um, our months of inventory is at 3.14, so most people probably don't quite know what that means, but that means if you list, that's a good, that's still good, it's a seller's market still until we get to about four to six, but if you list your home, the 3.14 months of inventory, if you list your home, on average, it'll take, it'll, sorry, the percentage that will sell is 31.4. So you're 31.4% likely to sell your home that month. That being said, it could take three months to sell if you price it too high, but it may not sell in that second or third month if other stuff comes on the market that is priced well. So price is definitely everything. You don't want to price it too low. You don't want to price it too high. You want to price it and have price it well and have a good uh, marketing plan and pricing strategy. I think, in my opinion, you know, I think you got to be a little bit aggressive about it. So yeah, there's uh, still strong sellers market. Thirty one point four percent of selling in the first month you list. Um, so that's last month took uh, 22 days for it to for how average house to sell. So that's 31%. Um, I don't know how those numbers correlate together. But anyways, you guys have any questions on what the market's doing? 
Uh, let me know. We're still seeing multiple offers in the lower end, but the higher end stuff's, of course, taking a little longer to sell. So, anyways, hopefully everyone's enjoying the sun. I'm stuck in the office here for a few more minutes. And then I'm going to get out and do some yard work. Woohoo! <laughs> Take care. Bye.